Good morning everyone, this is Guyana Speaks. I'd like to start off by wishing our Muslim brothers and sisters a very happy Eid. What we plan to do today is to just read a short story called Judas Journey by Michael John Sharples. Michael Sharples was born in 1937 in Guyana and sadly died in April 2020 this year. He was the son of J.B. Sharples and of Dorothy Edna Whitehead. We know the family um, very well and we just wanted to send this out as a tribute to them. Rod Westmus is going to be reading. The story that I'll be reading, as Anita said, Jonas, Judas Journey by Michael Sharples. I, I'm thinking he may have written this in 1954 because I was going through an old Queen's College magazine and there enough was this story. So, let me read it. Stop the car! Stop the car! Turn back! These startling orders came from the old lady who had hitherto been sitting silently beside Mr. Richards in the back seat of the taxi as it sped down the East Coast Road towards Georgetown. The black sheep you just knocked down on the road is bad luck sign, man. The same car is going to meet into an accident before it reached town, so help me. Look, old lady, countered the driver. In these three years since I've been driving down this road, I hit a cow, a calf, a pig, a turkey, everything yet, but nothing happened. I tell you this thing for true, man, the old lady persisted. The black sheep you just killed is a bad luck sign. I remember the time when... All right, all right, old lady, the driver interrupted her brusquely. If you feel like you're heading for trouble, you can get out the car and try walk. But I tell you straight, I'm not turning back. With the car came with that the car came to a sudden halt. The old lady carefully picked up the old suitcase that she was carrying, along with some odd accoutrements, and then stepped out onto the road. She was clutching her hat, and she was doing so just because of that strong breeze. She remained standing there for a while, watching the taxi as it moved away again. A look of both fear and pity in her eyes. Then she just stumbled away. Extraordinary, extraordinary that these people should believe in such rot, exclaimed Mr. Richards. Now that he was just the remaining passenger in the back of the taxi. No wonder they can't make any progress in this country. What with all these superstitious beliefs, Orby and all that sort of thing. The taxi lurched on down the road. Mr. Richards settled comfortably in the back seat that it was now his own. Poor wretch, he thought. She would probably have to walk all the way to Georgetown, all because of this foolishness. But as Mr. Richards reflected on the incident that he just witnessed, he realized for the first time that he too was uneasy. There had been an almost fanatical earnestness in that old lady's voice when she had made her unhappy prophecy. Could it be that she might be right after all? He remembered having read strange things like this in the worldwide magazine, which was supposed to be true. But no, 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 he told himself grimly. It was all nonsense. It couldn't happen. It just couldn't happen in any case. Suddenly there loomed up in the distance another car travelling towards them at what seemed to be well over 45 miles an hour. Worse than that, it was swerving from one side of the road to the other. As it drew near, Mr. 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 Richards could hear a loud rock of singing coming from the occupants. They were all probably drunk. And by some miracle, the two cars just missed colliding head-on. In the few seconds before that, almost fatal moment, Mr. Richards had actually become convinced that the old lady's prophecy was about to be fulfilled. But that conviction lasted only for an instant, as the seemingly inevitable did not occur. Mr. Richards sat back with a sigh of relief. It had been a near one, but no accident had taken place. Perhaps the knocking down of the sheep was a good omen, rather than a bad one, as the old lady had predicted. A huge truck appeared, coming down in the opposite direction, just as they were nearing Pleasance. 
It was heavily laden and going at a fast dip. Immediately, those in the taxi saw the danger. A particular stretch of road at which they were now travelling was rather narrow, and with the size of an oncoming truck, anything could happen. With a violent twist of the steering wheel, the taxi driver swung his vehicle over to the side of the road just as the big truck roared past. With another violent twist of the wheel, he barely managed to get it back on its course before it could turn turtle. Woo! exclaimed Mr. Richards as he mopped the sweat from his brow with a shaking hand. Another close thing. This, this is getting rather trying. The brakes in this car is working properly, the driver suddenly observed. What did you say? Was that man? The brakes not good? Mr. Richards now suddenly felt convinced that the old lady was right. Stop, stop, stop the scarred pleasance, he shouted to the driver with panic in his voice. I, I, I just remember I've got a cousin living there. Mr. Richards felt relieved, as at the same time rather foolish as he had once more stood on firm ground. What if nothing had happened to the taxi? It would look extremely silly. Anyway, he consoled himself with the thought that whatever was, was to happen, he was now safe. He stared at the taxi, saw it disappear in a cloud of dust in the distance. Had he been right to quit the journey? He wondered. And that's the end of the story.